You've covered this so much. Look at the state of Britain right now, yeah. Mike. We're broken. Highest inflation, tax rises, train drivers not driving, you know, the, the economy tanking, people working from home, police failing to arrest people and convict people who are grooming young girls. What has happened to Great Britain, Mike? What has happened to us? Well, do you know what I think has happened to it? And I'm, some, I'm, I'm sort of moving more and more closer to uh, Peter Hitchens' view of the world, which is that it's all Tony Blair's fault. Because literally, most of what we're seeing is the result of things that he did, changes that he made to the Constitution, uh, ways that he altered uh, the way that Britain is run. You know, he put all these kind of uh, liberal, wet lefties in charge of the institutions. He put them all into the civil service. He got uh, the Supreme Court. He signed us up to the European Court of Human Rights. It's all down to him. Well, well, he wanted to be the president of the European Union. Let's not forget that. And this is a guy who had this open border policy that actually bringing in cheap labour for decades under his leadership. And we've seen the stagnation of wages and, and you know, the poverty that we see around the country now. And I still actually, with Peter Hitchens, I'm, I'm with him on this. I do blame Tony Blair's premiership on what we're seeing right now. We're facing the consequences and, and the cost of what he did back then when he was prime minister of this country by opening up having this open borders policy as absolutely ruined our country and it has attacked our culture and way of life now i believe in multiculturalism i believe people should have the right to practice faith religion all that kind of stuff unless you're gary lineker of course because he's got dark skin um you know <laughs> the, 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 you know but what he did has ruined our country and yeah. even here in wales we got devolution because of tony blair yes. and look at the state of the welsh nhs or education and you know it's just an absolute mess mike and so tony blair's got a lot to apologize yes. for I and mean, he should not be awarded for what he's been doing. I mean, Wales is not in as bad a shape as Scotland is because Scotland actually is completely and utterly ruined, devastated and, and smashed to pieces uh, by Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP. They haven't got any clue what's going on. But let's talk about the striking as well because old uh, Mick Lynch, you know, everybody's favourite communist, is fast becoming this kind of cult figure. You know, he's on Question Time tonight as well. He spends more time in television studios than he does actually negotiating a deal because, of course, he doesn't want a deal. He just wants to fight the Tories in the same way that the teachers want to do it, in the same way that the doctors want to come out on strike. I mean, they're all going to copy the RMT, even though I don't think the RMT's strike is actually working. Yeah, I mean, he thinks he's the second coming of Arthur Scargill, doesn't he? That's he what does. He sees himself as. And the reality is with these strikes in the unions, and they're supported by Labour, because let's be honest, Keir Stam's not going to condemn them. No. I mean, he's sitting on more fences than Cooper and all. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he really, really is with a few splinters. And when yeah. you think about what they're doing right now, it's a knock-on effect, because I'm going to say, make a quote here, and, and you'll understand this, Mike. You know, we're always told never negotiate with terrorists, yeah. right? Because if you give in to them, they get their way. And what this is about for me is a bigger picture. If the government give in to what's happening with Mick Lynch, you know, calling on, you know, for pay rises across the board, then it's going to have a knock-on effect, which we've already heard from the NEU, talking about teachers potentially striking later this year. You know, the airlines are talking about striking. Why? Because if the government give an inch... To these unions, they'll take a mile. And let's not forget, this is a Labour Party that's funded by the unions, over yes. £100 million pound the last 10 years. And this is a political move, in my opinion, with these two by-elections coming up as well. Mm. And what they're, they're using this as a political football against Boris Johnson and a Conservative government. And Boris said to Starmer yesterday in Prime Minister's questions, what about the £10 million, uh, that you got from the unions for actually uh, propping up their way of life? And Starmer had no answer. Didn't even answer the question. Didn't say what he'd done with the money. Didn't say what it made him uh, uh, make his mind up about. I mean, Starmer now just looks even more ridiculous than he ever has, doesn't he? Well, he, 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 hasn't, he doesn't offer nothing. What does he offer in opposition? This is the saddest part of our democracy right now, Mike, talking about broken Britain. We have no real opposition. There are smaller parties out there trying to make their way. I know, I get that. And they're out there trying to work on, you know, breaking into the system. But we've got this two-party state, and unless it's changed or broken up, we're always going to be faced with the same situation because there is no real opposition. And I doubt it very much. Even if Keir Starmer was running the country right now, Mike, we would be in a worse mess, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Than we are right now, without a shadow of a doubt. You know, they're talking now even about returning back to the single market, the European, you know, uh, the European Union. What on earth is going on? You know, the country is messed up. These politicians don't know what they're doing quite clearly, and they need more people on those green benches with common sense, who stand up for the people, for the working people, because Labour certainly don't, and in some situations, neither do the Conservative Party.
No, and I'm very pleased to see from all the Tories that I've spoken to over the last few days that, that as far as the Bill of Rights goes, that will go through from the Tory side. There won't be any kind of, you know, recalcitrant backbench Tory MPs who go, oh, oh, this is a bit dangerous, they want to do this. Apparently they are all going to vote for it, so we'll just have to worry about the House of Lords. Yeah, well, the, the problem we've got with that, even if we have a UK Bill of Rights, Mike, we still have, we've got this treaty with the ECHR, and yeah. we're still tied into it because, and let's not forget as well, you know, Britain was responsible for writing those mm. human rights as well, post-war, Churchill, you know, but times have moved on. We're not living in the same era and things need to change. And mm. when you don't have the power here in our British courts and our judicial system to deport criminals and illegal immigrants, something is very, yes. very wrong. And so I welcome the Bill of Rights, but I'm very doubtful that we'll see it, um, you know, it, 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 the outcomes for what we would really want to happen, it actually happening from from this current government. Yeah, but don't forget, even though we set the ECHR up, we did not admit it into our laws until 1998, another Tony Blairism, right? And that's why we're trapped by this particular uh, court, because we have to, we have now signed up to a deal which says we must do what they say. Whereas before that, we didn't have to. We could take it under advisement, we could take it as a sort of suggestion, and that's what we need to go back to. And there's no reason why we can't do that, because up until 1998 that's exactly how it worked well surely sixth anniversary of brexit brexit today right we took back control that means sovereignty within our parliament there should be a, a legislation passed to in parliament that says no we're taking back full control yes we've got these international obligations and respect and all that kind of stuff and relationship with your european brothers and sisters and everything else but we have to take control of our own country mm. take control of our own borders stop pansy into the left-wing ideology of well you can't offend people you can't say that you can't do that no if people are here illegally we should have the sovereign power and right as a nation to deport them not just to rwanda even back to their own country yeah. and that's not racist that's actually that's what we should be doing yeah, look at Australia, look at other countries that have implemented some of these immigration policies. It's worked for them and it'll work for us as well, Mike. Oh, of course it will. I'm just seeing as we speak that uh, Heathrow um, workers from the GMB union are going to be balloting for strike action. That's great news, isn't it? So just in time for people to start going on holiday uh, back in the summer, trying to get things moving again. I mean, to be honest, it looks as if they're on strike already, the way the baggage is going through Heathrow. Yeah, well, it, well I, I was thinking of this this morning. It's almost like lockdown by design now. Yeah. You, can't, you can't afford to go anywhere because the food prices are too high. <laughs> you can't get on a train because you can't use your car because they're shut. You can't get a passport because the DVR or your license, the DVR mm. here. It's almost as if they got us in lockdown point two by design, Mike. Yes. I mean, it is. It's incredible. I mean, I've booked to go away for two weeks, finally, for the first time in three years, right? And I'm now beginning to think it's never going to happen. You know, I'm supposed to go at the end of July. Um, I, I'm, I'm not even sure we're going to get off the ground. Well, you, you should come to Welsh Wales, Mike. It's beautiful down here, and you can come and visit me in my beautiful swimming Listen, I, I, did, I did once get a sunburn in the Gower Peninsula. It was so <laughs> nice, and I wasn't prepared for it. And I was sitting on a beach. I thought, blimey, it's really hot here. It's lovely. <laughs> well, talking about Welsh and Wales, as you know, you mentioned at the opening uh, of the show to, with me today. Yes. Uh, Leonard Morgan, the Health Minister of Wales. Yes. Uh, now, she is the one who was very, very strong on reducing the speed limit oh, in yeah. residential areas from 30 to 20, which yes. is all in state. Do you right? know, I've got a feeling that... Uh, but I'm going to ask you to hold the thought for a minute because we're going right, to stop okay. for, for a minute. But I've got a feeling that at one point we put this woman on plank of the week. I'm not sure if it was for this, but it was for something like that.